Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 97. I do declare. I'm your host, William Yosef Fitzchrismers. Joining us this week, my loving husband, Ian Gibson. Yes, loving, daring. We've had some fights. We've been to therapy, but things are better than they were last week. That's true. Therapy by our very own therapist, Dr. Kyle Bailey. I'm dropping you guys as clients because it's not worth it. No sex in the office <laughs> is what he keeps telling us. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about all sorts of things. Um, the one thing we're not here to talk about is how I have to pull up chat because I did not do that. Wow. <sighs> Gentlemen, how are you? Wow. Look, there's a whole chat Gentlemen, already how? and I'm, I'm playing our audio. What a nightmare <laughs> yeah, we I'm live saying. in. <laughs> Um. Wow, there were a bunch of people in chat. I hate this. Ugh. Ew, go away. Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. Yeah, go away. Don't watch this. Um, that's sorry. That just reminds me. My nephew went through a phase for about a year where he just kept making a fake puking noise all the time because what? Because because him and his dad thought it was a funny joke. He was like four or five at the time. Oh, oh. But okay. the problem was, <laughs> problem was he would just go Whoa! and we'd all start laughing and start be like, "Stop it!" And then he'd do it again. And we all start laughing. So it was a very puke bad on the floor. We joke. all start laughing. <laughs> you <were> just <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesus. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, we're gonna talk about some video games we've been playing. I'm gonna talk about a video game I know people are very excited for. And, and very excited for, and I've been playing it this week. Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, folks, is a yeah. fantastic video game. It's great. Wow. I, should I <laughs> was gonna buy it off the Goodwill, and then the Goodwill price surpassed the eBay price, so I just bought it on eBay. Uh, and I've been playing it this week on the 4K television uh, with the upscale cables, which looked rough at first, but uh, I I noticed um, my TV turned on game it. mode. Oh. So the, so the top half of the screen... <laughs> what are you laughing at? What is going on? I was just thinking about how they could never make a mainstream resolution around 3000 because they'd have to call it 3K, which is too close to KKK. It's not that close. It's like... <laughs> close enough. There's still only 1K. It's not that. like there were KKK members going, 3K? Three, like, like they, look, <laughs> we got 2K. 3K? Okay, 1080p. We got to go to 4K. Why can't we go to 3K? I don't want to talk about it, okay? <laughs> it's off okay. limits. It's way too many Ks. <laughs> Um, anyways, so I turned off game mode and the game looks fantastic now. Um, it's really fun. It, some areas are frustrating. Uh, the fact that they like inverted the controls is really annoying and you can't change it, uh, for like the moving the vacuums around. It's just not intuitive to today's controls. And, mm -hmm. um, the sore lack of health in that game, you like are perpetually at low health and I finally looked up where to find health in the mansion. And there's like two spots where you can get like the 50 big hearts so you can get your health back together. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you're Luigi in Luigi's Mansion. You have been summoned to a mansion because you won it in a contest or you and Mario won it in a contest and Mario went missing. Uh, so you're looking for him. That game should be in a study of how to provide the perfect atmosphere Luigi is terrified the entire time. He's like, <laughs> oh, oh, Mario. There's a dedicated Mario button, which is fantastic. Oh, that's and great. And on top of that, he hums, whistles, and sings along to the music in a scared oh, Luigi voice. That's incredible. Di diegetic. Like, it's so good. <laughs> you know, I, I, so I never played Luigi's Mansion, but. I knew it always got kind of like a middling rap from people. Um, well, middling in terms of like some people loved it, some people hated it. And then somebody a couple of years ago, I can't remember who it was. I was listening to a podcast and they pointed out that the main complaint with Luigi's Mansion was it was a launch game for the GameCube and it was short. I think it's only like I want to say five or six hours just off the top of my head. That's what I remember. So so people weren't necessarily pissed at the game. They were pissed. They had a brand new console. They paid money 
full price for this game and they were done with mm. it in a couple hours. And I feel like that has made the most sense the more I hear about Luigi's Mansion. It's not people actually complaining about the game. It's just like a sour in the moment experience playing that game. Yeah, I, I can see that. It, my biggest complaint is the controls and that I chalk up to does, uh, <clears throat> being time. on a GameCube from 2001 yeah. or 2003. Yeah. Um, yeah, never play, never play original Resident Evil 4. It controls like absolute garbage. Yes, it's real bad. I agree. Um, so uh, like aside from that, like it nails the atmosphere. The look is so good. The story's fun. The characters are cool. Uh, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, but it has taken second fiddle today to a game that uh, it comes out tomorrow. The God of War 2 Ragnarok. Uh, I <laughs> got a message at work today with just a string of numbers from, I guess he's my boss, Tam, uh, who works for GameSpot. And it was just a string of numbers. And I just replied, God of War, question mark? And he goes, yes. I go, okay, thank you. That's awesome. So I put that in on the PS5. It's the PS4 and PS5 version, which is nice. Uh, I just want to be upfront that I was given this for free by Sony. Wait, hey, um, wait a minute. Will. Which version did you install? So, so, Ian Gibson, I was worried. I was on guard. On guard. Uh, I clicked on God of War and it, on the, in the store page, and it brought up a menu with the PS5 version and the PS4 version clearly labeled and asked me which one to install. Okay, so, that's a little better. That's a little better. Props, yeah. props to good old Sony for finally figuring it out. Um, well, I wouldn't so say, I installed the PS4 I version. Say, not to quibble on this, but I wouldn't say figuring it out because I think Xbox has kind of done that, which is that they don't even ask you. They don't need exactly. to. They know your console. They install the right version. But that is yeah. absolutely better than the previous experience. Yes, totally. So I have the PS5 version. Uh, I installed it, booted it up, uh, and I'm about three. Let's see. I started at 430, maybe five, and I played till seven when the game crashed on me. No, I played till eight when the game crashed on me. Day one patch, I think, is tomorrow. Um... So it's what three hours? Oh no! Someone redeemed a corn. It's not going to play on this chat or neat. Um, it's fun. I like it. Uh, at first, I was a little overwhelmed. You kind of start the game with everything Kratos had at the end of the first God of War reboot, and that is a lot of things that they try to teach you, you quickly. I okay, how does he lose them? No, he doesn't lose them. I, you start with all of them again. No, but I mean, let's be honest here. At some point, something's going to happen and he's going to lose them, right? I have not lost them yet. I have them all. Okay, um, that's surprising. That's surprising. So one, one of the things they got rid of in a story thing, which made sense, uh, but it wasn't a thing that you use in combat. So you have the, the Chaos Blades, you have the Leviathan Axe. <laughs> Out the gate, they're like, hey, here's... So I only say it was overwhelming because there's immediately all of the traversal options from the end of God of War that you worked up to at the beginning of this game. So it's it's kind of hard to set your mind back into that. Like, yeah, I feel like, like constantly looking for places to go and everything. Like someone like me who's still actively playing the first one would be in a much better position to then just jump right into the second one. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. And, and story-wise, I was okay because, to be honest, the past like three weeks at work, all I have been doing is God of War stuff, recaps, all that sort of thing. So, like, that is all fine and in my brain. But it was that playing of it that I was like... And I missed a tooltip on what the glowing yellow circles were. So I spent, like, four hours not knowing what these glowing yellow circles were. And I knew the red circles were attacks that you can't block or parry. So the red circle, so the yellow ones, I'm like, oh, those are the ones you can parry or block. Um... Aside from the regular attacks that you can parry and block. And so I kept doing that and they kept like parrying me. And so finally I figured it out. It's a parryable attack, but not, I think it's a parryable attack, but not a blockable attack. So I can parry it if I time it right, but I'm not keeping my, so anyways, mm -hmm. you're so funny. You do this every time and it's so funny. Hey, at uh, least it's not Rim World. Yeah, that's true. So um, I'm, I'm going to stay general on it because I want to play the game more and have other people play the game more before I talk about it. Um, the story so far has been great. I, I think that's something that the first God of War excelled at. I wasn't necessarily like, oh, I, the only thing I really wanted to know was the stuff with Atreus. And I was like, how are they going to address that? And they did a great opener uh, with all of that stuff. You go and find all the stuff. It's 
Fimble Winter. So you start in a cave, you make it back to the home from the original game. It's a thing with Ragnarok. It's called Fimble Winter. And I mean, it's I hear great, you, but but that's great. one of those things you should probably leave out of your serious video <laughs> game. You know. Um. So I just want to touch on the retreading of the older map. Um that we had talked about last week, I had likened it to Majora's Mask um, sort of thing, which actually wasn't a great likening because Majora's Mask is a completely different map and they made it in a year with horrific crunch. Um, but it's just a winter version of what was in the first God of War game and there's completely new trails, new stuff. You're like in a familiar environment, but you're not navigating it in the same way, if that makes sense, because of ice and winter and... All sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. And then within the first hour, I was already out of that area into a brand new realm that wasn't in the first game. So gotcha. I, that I was the really one thing good... that I was worried about. But yeah, I saw a really good comparison from uh, Gene Park, who said it's like Kamurocho in the Yakuza series. They're trying yes. to instill this sense of familiarity with the same place. Yeah, um, totally. And I was I, like, I, don't I, was think like I okay, that. yeah last week when I was trying to talk. About I mean, I it, so. still don't like the game, but I'm going to stop using that against it. Yeah, totally. Um, so the combat, uh, the combat's great. The story's great. Um, I'm, I'm having a fun you're time just, with it. I'm, you're just so used to my bullshit. No, I know. I hate it. You. I'm, uh, there, was something, <laughs> there is something I wanted to complain about, but I really don't remember what it was. Um, no, now you have to remember. Which is just like, it, it, I'm not a, I'm not as excited as I was with the first God of War reboot. That was an exciting yeah. change. And and I'm going to go somewhere with this. It was an exciting change. And I never played the original God of Wars, but seeing that change and seeing that story and the way they told it was incredible. This is more of that. If you want more of that, this is more of that. If you don't want more of that, like Ian, I think you won't probably won't like this game uh, because yeah, you don't want more I, of that. I think... Even if somebody didn't like the first game, it was kind of surprising when they started showing this game. I'm going to take off the asshole hat for a bit, like genuine opinion here. It really did just look like the same as the first game. And that's why I was like, what's new here? You know, that's what it really felt like to me. So to hear you say that is a little disappointing that that's that the looks match the game in a way. Yeah, but I, I would liken it to Halo 3 and Halo ODST where they're very similar exactly the same engines games but different maps mm -hmm. different stories different so like that is the like that is the level of uh like familiarity you have to have so if you knew halo 3 you were really good already good to go into halo ODST. if you didn't know halo 3 you were still good because they had good onboarding but not as like mm -hmm. crazy incredible or, or like good to go for it so anyways Let's see this is, whole thing has gotten me worried that i think zelda breath of the wild 2 tears of the kingdom 4 uh, will make me a little uh, concerned no, see, about... there's a difference, which is that first trailer they showed, they didn't show enough, right? But every trailer afterwards, especially the most recent trailer, was like 99% new stuff, right? It was like completely new areas, a lot of new mechanics being shown off. So I think that's the complete opposite in terms of what should be the same game, what you think is going to be the same game, and they're showing a whole lot of brand new wonky stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think it's quite there in my brain. I'm just worried that's going to happen because, I mean, the Tears yeah. of the Kingdom was the exact same map underneath <clears throat> everything. Um, it was like similar combat, all that. So it's just I'm I'm connecting the dots now, even though there's not enough information to know. But I was just kind of worried about that. Suffice to say, I'm still having a blast with God of War Ragnarok. Uh, three or four hours in, they've already done some interesting things. This new world I'm in is fun. They Fimble Winter in Norse mythology was winter everywhere, but in this game they've changed it to every realm is affected in a different way. So it kind of changes it up. Um, this new realm I'm in is really hot and stinky and gaseous, stinky. Uh, which is uh, yeah, stinky, uh, which is fun. Um, I can't believe they use the same boat animation. This game shit. God. <laughs> oh, but it, it is very, it's immediately God of War 2018. Uh, you're constantly checking around every corner to see if there's another loot chest. Or, like, some sort of weird Norse puzzle to figure out. Uh, yeah. I'm engrossed. I'm in for the long haul. But uh, if you didn't like God of War 2018, I don't think you're going to suddenly like 
this God of War game. Uh, I have not encountered a lot of the new stuff that I know people can't talk about due to embargoes. Uh, I think all the embargoes are up, but I haven't even reached that stuff, so I can't even talk about it. Um, but I know some of that stuff's exciting. So, anyways, that's God of War, Luigi's Mansion. I mean, Luigi's Mansion, way better than God of War. Uh, game of the year. Game of the year, right now. Um, yeah, it's no Elden Ring. I'll tell you that much. Uh, moving on, Ian, you're still playing some Hi. spherical programs. Yeah. You know Honestly, if if you don't mind, I feel like this is a good segue. Let's go backwards in time. Let's have Kyle talk about his continuing experiences with God of War One. I was I was going to say I thought that would work better. Will I'm surprised you didn't automatically know that as host Ian, of this. Show. Tell me you about host of podcast. Sphere. I honestly just clicked over to the notes doc and <laughs> okay. didn't even see that Kyle had written God of War because yeah. Uh, so, anyways, here you want me to try it again? <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that's Luigi Mansion and God of War 2. Speaking of God of War 2, let's reverse the time and talk about Dyson Sphere Program. Ian G- <laughs> I don't think I like it, honestly. Like, it's Sony's big title <laughs> and just... <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, tell seriously. me about God of War 1, please. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm coming at this game from, obviously, years removed from when it was originally released. I don't have a PlayStation. I only have a PC. So I feel like I'm getting this weird experience from Sony exclusives where... I, I'm on my back foot a little bit, and a lot of the hype that that I've seen people have about all these games has died down, so I can really experience them on, like, a, a more unbiased level and, and, like, a less of a hype level. The only reason I bought the, the God of War remake was because it was cheap. It was, like, 30, 40 bucks or something. Ooh. And I honestly really, really am, like, falling into deeper and deeper the, the gameplay, the mechanics, um, the story. I, I mean... I don't know what I was expecting uh, other than it's the title of the God of War has obviously a, a history to it. I, I'm like, you will. I've never played any of those games. I just knew that it was about literally killing Greek gods and mythological figures as as Kratos. I, I knew that much. Um, and there's definitely some stuff in the story where it's like, oh, you need to have played the other games to understand what this callback is. Cause like uh, there's a part in the, in the first story in the first game where Kratos sees the image of a, um, I forget what God it is, but she's like a ghost basically, but she's still kind of there. And he's oh, like, Athena. Kate yeah, Bush. Athena, Athena. It was Kate Bush. Um, Kate it was Vecna. Um, yeah, so he sees Athena, and I was like, this would have a lot more of a profound impact on me had I had, you know, three games worth of experiences. But I also totally understood what they were doing at that moment. You know, it's like his he, he can't escape his past. Like, you know, it's attached to him, and sooner or later he's going to have to confront it. Um, so I don't think it's absolutely necessary that you play those games, but, you know, it does help fill things out. But that being said, they do a really good job of introducing you to the world. Um, I really like Greek mythology. I don't know as much about Norse mythology, so it's sort of new a little bit for me. Um, But it's really interesting what they've done with some of the changes to the Norse gods that I have known, where it's like Freya is very different than like what she actually is historically, Um, but also super interesting character. I love her. Um, So I I don't know. Every time I open it up, I seem to like it a little bit more, which is funny because normally with games that I feel that about, it's right away. Like it, it's instantly mm-hmm. like, oh, I got it. But this one definitely took like, I think maybe four or five hours before I was like, oh, I get it. Like I, I actually understand what this is going to be from now on. And then I, I think things just started clicking. So really big fan. Um, interested to see where the story goes. I think I'm about halfway done. I've like a hundred percented some of the other worlds um, with, I'm not normally a completionist, but for certain story driven games, I like to, I want, you know, I want to get the best ending or whatever. Um, so uh, I don't know if this has that. I've heard there's like slightly different endings for God or like like different things that I happen. Can't remember. I, I don't know if it is, but it, I either way, I feel compelled to to explore and to to do what I can to complete most of the game. So I'm a big fan and I'm nice. interested to play the sequel whenever cool. it comes out. Yeah, it um, on, it, on PC. It's funny, you, you made me think um that the other thing i don't know if i said it was um god of war 2018 is the tutorial for this game like <laughs> i spent the first hour getting my god of war legs back instead of the game teaching me how to play which they did do they had tool tips and stuff 
but still like an hour in i was like oh what i should be dodging i should be upgrading like they seem to be blazing through it in a because they have to do everything up front where in god of war 2018 you were getting that stuff slowly added throughout the game because you were finding it throughout the game versus this one <laughs> is off the bat and they're trying to crunch the 40 hours of the first game into one hour at the beginning of this game so i think that was a little like thing that you have to get around but again if you if you're coming into this never having played God of War 2018, I think that, like, this isn't a game I would recommend you play this and not the other one, you know? Like, you're here for the continuation of the story. Yeah, I guess you can watch the recap if you want, but I would probably always suggest for you to start with the 2018. Especially because they're not super different. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, anyways. That's fun. Does it, uh, does it look better, like, at all? Or does it look uh, yes, exactly it looks the way same? better. I, I okay. switched it to uh, performance mode. It's gorgeous. Uh, runs at a solid three frames a second. And then I switch it back to fidelity mode, which runs at a fantastic 60 frames a second. And that's what I play in. It doesn't look as good. Uh, actually, the 60 frames a second mode probably looks like the PS4 or PC God of War 2018. Uh, okay. The fidelity mode, again, looks fantastic. Is there like uh, ray or performance... tracing or like, like what are they... I don't know. That is a technical thing that you would have to Google because I, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, that's the other thing I want to mention. In those options, there are so many accessibility options in this good. game. It is good. absolutely wild. Um, uh, there, we had a tip video go up at work that I was watching, and one of Lucy's tips was uh, there's they added checkpointing for mini-bosses. So if you keep losing oh, on a mini boss, it checkpoints that. you at the health pips of a that's mini boss. Awesome. So I, I was like, like that. that's really helpful. They have the you can either you can press uh you can press the button to instead of tapping it for the quick time events. You mm. can also for the Kyle, you'll know this. Do you have the the thing that you draw the symbols with? Yeah, yeah, you have so, to find the specific spot. For those, they have precise uh, not as precise and n no precision needed. Oh, so like awesome. you can walk up to it, hit a button, and he does it for you. You can vaguely do it, or you can do it accurately. That's uh, which that's I great. There, yeah. There's not enough. Of, there's not enough of those doors in the first one to annoy me. But I could definitely see like some people are just like, I just want to get the stupid door open. So I I get that. And also just to say. Um, I'm loving the fact that these, at least the first party games are really, I know, um, Naughty Dog is really good with accessibility options too, but like Sony, I think as far as yeah. implementing it into their video games is doing a really totally. good job with that. I know Microsoft has their, um, uh, I forget what it's called. The, 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 the controller with like a bunch of different inputs you can like customize it to. It's, it's awesome. I love seeing stuff like that. My, what I would like to see next is more, um, like eyesight options because my dad used to really love mm -hmm. playing video games but his eyesight is really bad and he's colorblind so um he doesn't pick up a lot of like what if he's watching me do something he can get the general sense of of things but i i want more um like if it's a contrast thing or if it's just layering different filters on top to make it easier i want more of that to become standard but so, i think that um, this is absolutely awesome i god of war has it and i think the last of us remake has it there's a okay. high contrast mode which is great. There's a high contrast UI mode, and then there's you can just change Kratos to whatever whatever color you want, and change oh, enemies nice. to whatever color you want, and it That's just cool. it just makes them like Kratos is all red. It makes all the enemies blue. Like any any nice. option for that. It is. Uh, I think I might turn it on just to play around with it, but yeah, uh, it's it's got all that. So I would definitely take a look at that um, in your spare time. Yeah, and see, for sure. See if any of that works. Did Good the job, Last of Us remake Monica. come out on PSE? Or is that... I, I think don't PS1. think so. I don't think Actually, yet. Yeah, I don't think it is at all. Yeah. Anyways. Glad they remade that game. Uh, Ian, did you want to talk about Dyson Sphere at all? Yeah, I'll talk about Dyson Sphere program a little bit. Uh, still playing it. I'm at 24, 25 hours now. I, I got to the point where I fully embraced logistics. So logistics is everything from little drones that run around and do things for you like little drone package flying robots to like spaceships that are moving items between planets for you and so i got to the point where 
I just I barely use conveyor belts now. So so the idea this was in Factorio too, but I'm really embracing it in Dyson Sphere program. So normally in one of these games, it's all about conveyor belts and inserters. You know, conveyor belts move items, inserters put items on a belt or pick items off a belt. So it's all about mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm mining here, and then I'm gonna have a conveyor belt take this to the factory, and then a conveyor belt to the second factory, which makes these items which works in the beginning, but it starts to become this pain when you're trying to lay things out and you have these conveyor belts crisscrossing your base all over the place. So I'm now at this point where I can pretty much pretty freely without any like pause for concern for any resources or anything. I can be like, oh, I need to make some gears. I'm going to put down a chest. I'm going to put a, a drone on uh, a drone module on top of it that says fill this chest with you know, uh, steel ingots or iron ingots. And all of a sudden, all these fucking drones like come across my base and they're just like, here's your ingots, here's your ingots, here's your ingots. And they're just like filling the chest. And then at the end, then I have like a factory and the factory goes, turn it into gears. I have like five factories and then they dump in another chest. And that chest says, give these gears out to people. And then and then I can go, I can go into an, another side of the planet and just set down a factory and say, this factory needs gears. And all these drones come out of uh, like literally everywhere and drop the gears and then i have that set up interplanetary as well so basically they're all feeding into a spaceship hub so i go to another planet and i set down a spaceship hub and i say hey i need some gears out of this spaceship hub and and spaceships start flying from the other planet to deliver like thousands of gears to this one spot and it's fantastic y'all it's like it feels like cheating because normally like the things that I'm crafting now are like 30 steps deep in the crafting process in terms of craft this, which is an ingredient in this, which is an ingredient in this, which is an ingredient in this. But now I'm just like, oh, I need to craft this and it needs this item. OK, hey, drones, give me this item. And they just give it to me because I have it somewhere in my system. And it's fantastic. So I'm not I'm a little bit closer to finishing that game, but I feel like I'm still only halfway through. I'm getting close to the end of the tech tree in a way but I still need to get to the capacity, the production capacity to actually finish it, which is literally building the Dyson sphere. So I've started Mm -hmm. building the Dyson sphere components, but now I need to build like, I guess like thousands and tens of thousands of them and then shoot them at the sun, which is the next step. So it's pretty cool. What is, Um, I watched, I watched mm -hmm. like a trailer for it, but I don't know if I saw actual like gameplay gameplay. What is the UI like for it? it? You ever seen Factorio? Yeah. It's factorial, but it's 3D. So, okay. so it's kind of like it's kind of like the little prints where you're on these like miniature planets that have like an extreme Mario curvature. Galaxy. Yeah, kind of oh, like Mario okay. Galaxy. Okay. okay. And then and then you're placing items basically identical to factorio. So that's what it's like. You're basically com- controlling this this mech and you're running around like being like place, 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 place. Okay. okay. So you're kind of like placing items on it. Um yeah, that's pretty much Dyson Zero program. It's still fantastic. It's still a huge time sink, but it's incredibly rewarding, and I love it. Um, there is another game I've been playing. Oh, I no. I didn't put it on the list. Oh, no. no I, none of this surprise game. I have waited for... I Honestly, I, I just forgot to put it on the list. I have been waiting months to buy this game, and it finally hit a sale price of $20, and I was like... like this is I guess? this is the money. Yeah, you want to guess? Did it come out this year? Yes. This is not a guess. This is, I don't this have is a like guess. a sink. <laughs> so who done it? Wait, this wait, is, give hey, me a clue. You know what's really annoying when someone says, Can I guess? and then sits there and thinks. I just gave you wait, a clue. No, which give is me a clue. It, it gave me two clues. It went on sale for twenty dollars and it came out this year, and I've waited months to buy it. You've waited months. Wait, wait! Don't tell me. We have to guess. This is fun. This is content. Came out this year. It went Came on sale for year. twenty bucks, and I've waited months to buy it. Uh, uh what came out this year? Did anything come out this year? I think Teardown was last year. I already own it. Oh, okay. Uh, Ooh, Teardown was Teardown was April. It's great. Who's bit. the company? What company? I'm not telling you. What console? I don't even know who the companies. Uh, I got it for PS5. I got the PS5 version. The PS4 version is typically $10 cheaper, but for some reason, finally in the sale, the PS5 and PS4 versions, I'm sorry, the, the current gen and the last gen versions were the same price. So I got the Xbox Series X version because it was the same price as the one version. So wait, you sorry, didn't said, get it on the PS5? I got it on the Series X. Series X. 
what I'm trying to say is this game normally is $10 more on next gen consoles, but gotcha. for some reason, this sale, all four versions were just $20. So I was able to get the series X version for the same price as the Xbox one version. I don't and know. You're saying it came out this year. Fuck off. I've been playing the quarry. Okay. <laughs> This game is stupid. Okay, can I guess? <laughs> okay, now tell me all the information I need to make my guess. Oh, we got the content, folks. Oh, that was so good. Oh, I've been playing the quarry. I do want to yeah. play a game though, and which is before it? I talk about this. You hate it so Will, much. I want you to like genuinely guess how long you what gave my it. what my opinion is on this game. Is it good? I or think bad? I think you good, bad, or medium. I think you despise this game. <laughs> That's I think close. Think I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> it's not good. I played like 90 minutes of it. So look, this game, like this game is, I don't think the game is awful, but this game is very niche. It's so niche. It's like, do you like very stereotypical horror movies? Do you also like to play video games that have like very little interaction in them, but lots of star power? And then where those two combine, it's like, congratulations, here's a video game. For Lots you. of star power, excuse me? Yeah. They take no. these celebrities. They they're give not them celebrities. Weird... They're, they're pretty, they're known. Yeah, they're known, but they're not celebrities. So you take these people, you give uh, them bad face versions, you put them in the game, you give them okay writing, but there's too much of it. And then you give them like weird mo like mocap. It's not I'm not saying they did the mocap, but it doesn't quite translate well. And then you're kind of just living in a 90 minute horror movie that is just spread out way too long. And I really was not enjoying it. I look, I'm going to be clear. I gave it a very honest shot for about 90 minutes. And then I was just like, that's fine. I don't I think you would like it. Zero desire to play this. I OK, look, I, I do have some objective flaws with the game. And there's two of them. Actually, there's three of them. I'll start with the minor one first. So, you know, at the beginning of the game, you're in the car with that guy and the girl and the guy. You know, they're driving and then they think they hit yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. None of this is spoilers. It's the first 15 minutes of the game. The guy, when he's in the car, he's too tall. I know that actor. He's a small person. <laughs> It's just very weird. I was literally like playing the game. I was being like, why does he look like he's six feet tall the way he's like sitting in the driver's seat? Like he should <laughs> be like eight to be inches tall. shorter. It was just very weird. That's all. It was a very small complaint, but it was also pissing me off. Number two, I don't think HDR works in this game. Was it was HDR working for you in this game? I think so. So like it was not working properly because everything was still gray instead of black. And I have a very good TV. But then the other problem was I went to the menu where you address the brightness and they and they were like HDR settings, adjust your brightness. And they have the thing where it's like, can't see this, barely see this, can fully see this. No matter what I could do, I could not get the can't see this to be anything but clearly but John visible. Cena. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was like I was just like, this is clearly got to be. And then I looked it up and people were saying I, I didn't fully investigate it, but it sounds like they're they did a fake HDR. Where, where they have enough tech in there to trigger HDR on your TV and the console, but it's not actually a true HDR, which fucking sucks because it's a horror game. It should be dark as night. You know, it shouldn't be like fucking grays all over the place. Um, and then my third objective complaint, Ian the motion. The I think <laughs> you'd hate this too, because I've heard you talk about it. The motion blur is god awful in this game, isn't it? Uh, I might have turned it off. It was the water that was really bad. I, I, I looked for it. I couldn't find an option to turn off. It was so bad. So, Kyle, I'm thinking about how to describe this to you. It's so bad that if you're looking like at a column mm -hmm. and you turn, the column blurs, but it also distorts and becomes a diamond. <laughs> like the distortion is like not just artifacts, blur. basically. Not that it artifacts, but it looks like it's literally like stretching the image, but not uniformly. So it, it puts blur on top of it. And then it like the middle of the column pinches out further than the top and bottom. And it's just like super over the top obvious. Like they're really trying to be like like a dingy early 90s film look. And it's it's the bad. It's a mm -hmm. bad type of fake film look. Um, 
So yeah, I'm glad I played it though. I'm ready to talk about it for game of the year. I'm glad you loved it. Honestly, I'm glad somebody got some enjoyment out of the game. I think it's just way too niche and none of that oh, yeah. overlaps with what I want. I don't you know? think it's your type of game at all. I just found it funny that you had to play it or made yourself play it. It's like, I don't think it's you would like immortality at all, but uh, like, I like, yeah. So it's whatever. It's game of the year. Yeah. I'm going to give, um, give it a shot. Did you, did you get to the gypsy lady at all? Yes. Your, Cause there's the prologue. Done, the Fuck off. There's prologue. You get the gypsy laundry. That's your sheets for Her? Saturday. Oh, that's my sheets. Or Thursday night. Uh, uh, did you think she looked her? real in some of those scenes? I think <laughs> that one's impressive. Oh, I forgot it. I forgot. Another objective complaint. Some of the shots and scenes are out of focus. Did you notice that? Like are some of the gypsy right scenes game? when she's sitting at the table is like it's like three centimeters out of focus. So you know what I mean? Like in terms of like camera, it's, it feels like you're just like, just, just somebody grab the focus knob and bring it in just a little bit. And, but they would like every now and then the focus would come in here, but she would lean forward and you would see the focus like here and not on her face. Uh, for, for listeners, I'm pointing like in front of her. And it was like, what the fuck is going on with this game? Like they're trying to make it so cinematic, but she kept like doing this with her mouth. It was like they watched an old person. They grabbed like three ticks from them and then she they just had this old loop person. every three seconds. But old people don't go like this constantly where they're just like moving their mouth weirdly. They do I don't want to spoil it, but she does do that. It's just weird because like they're trying so hard to be realistic, but then they keep making these like really stupid fucking like video game mistakes where it's like your motion blur looks terrible. doesn't look realistic. You know, you're out of focus. Your character actions like animations are a little bit too wonky. And it was just like all of that on top of me being like, am I like I had this moment where I was like, am I invested in this story? And I was like, no, not yeah. even what's the guy's name? Ted Raimi. Not Ted even Raimi? him. Oh, he couldn't so save good. it. He was fantastic, so but he couldn't save it. Not even the bad guy, the dog collar that says Ian on it, <laughs> like the yeah. monster's name being Ian. I was like, I'm in that. Was, but everything else, story, the fucking characters, the movement, the visuals. I was just constantly off put by this game. And I don't yeah, mean to shit on fine. it, but I was I was trying so hard. I was like, I'm going to buy this game. I'm going to give it an honest shot. I'm going to try and if I like it, I'm going to try and finish it so I can hand it off to Jake. And I'm still going to hand it off to Jake. And I had time to play it. And I was literally just like. Fuck man, ninety minutes and I couldn't pant it anymore. I'll give you that. <clears throat> it's a fantastic video game, folks. Go play it. Um, I would say if you're at all interested in it, if you think any of that is for you, that horror movie, you know, kind of pass the controller, like here's a story with some some interactive moments, choose your own adventure. Then yeah, try it. It seems like it's a fantastic one of those. But if you're not into those. You are not into this game and you should not give it a shot. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I, I also don't know, like Karen and I played it passing the controller off and all that, like, oh, don't let him die, like all that sort of stuff. So like that might have played into it a little bit. Um, but uh, did you like Until Dawn? Have you played Until Dawn? I'm not. I don't ever fucking playing that game. <laughs> okay. I like oh, no, games. I'm just asking. Like, uh, I think you have to like this type of game to like that game. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this is the it. first one. Genuine answer. This is the first one I gave a shot. I'm giving it a shot because I've been wrong before. I've been surprised and you gave it such high marks and it's on the game of the year list that I wanted to give it a shot. I'm yeah. honestly a little upset that I didn't like it, but that's See, just like, how it I, goes. I'm go I haven't played it yet. I'm going to within the next two days, but like Forza, not Forza, Gran Turismo. I feel like I'm going to be the exact same way. I'm going to be that's like, fine. this game yeah. probably should be good, but I hate it because it's not burnout paradise like that's what yeah. i want it to be and, and then it's not that and then honestly do what i did find some objective flaws with it too because that's a good middle ground yeah to be like look i personally that's hate it flaw. but also there's things that are objectively wrong with it that's how i approach criticism yeah fuck you so i hate you. ian but objectively <laughs> like he's also a piece of shit i think that's funny <laughs> um okay it's time for the news i'm gonna play the news theme there's not much news this week Here's the news, it's gaming news, we're talking about news, what's up news? 
is, but now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you, though, unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. That uh, song written by man. <sighs> scheduled extra life the same weekend as us uh, uh, moving on folks i'm not that upset about it i'm not that no, upset really about are. it now that we have now that we have other news didn't, so didn't we didn't we let them know we tried to yes yes yeah. no, 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 we'll tell no. the story we let them yeah. know and then chris said they had scheduling issues and had to do it this weekend i i if if yeah, this clip, clip reaches them we do not fault them at all we just like making fun of them for it we like I, the I drama know, yeah, I have no issue with it. Like Let me scheduling put it this way. Look, scheduling. <laughs> between save data and subpixel, only one of us has a donation goal where we are forced to write subpixel save data fanfic. That's all. That's I'm true. Say. That's true. Um, folks, uh, news is a little light this week, which means we get to talk about it quickly. Uh, Netflix is making a live action Gears of War movie, an adult animated series. <laughs> Folks, about 10 years too late. <laughs> yeah. Here's a great tip for you. I, I, I may be in a minority here, but when you call something adult, I don't, yeah. I think of yeah. porn immediately. I yeah. get a boner. I get a boner. I am. S Say mature. Mature? How? Yes. R rated? Mature. This is like I was just thinking the other day how when you and I and Karen and I guess I guess Karen and Maggie were there, too. When we were in Montreal this summer <laughs> and uh, Karen and Wilbur nice enough to drop us off at the airport at the end and we were driving to the airport and we saw the signs as like departures and arrivals. And I said, you know, every time I see the signs at the airports, there's like a second where I have to stop myself and I have to think. Am I which one should I go to? Because it's always a little bit confusing that they call it departures and arrivals. And Will goes, I wonder if there's a better term for that. And it took me literally a tenth of a second to think up, pick up and drop off. And I was like, <laughs> that's so much better. And that's that's what just happened was they shouldn't call it adult. It should be mature. You know, like when you call adult, it's porn, yeah, period. Well, also, to your point, arrivals translated to someone who doesn't speak English sounds like you're arriving to a place, so you might mistranslate exactly. that and go, like, just make it easy, people. So, the, anyways, they're making an, an arrival animated series. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, God. Uh, <laughs> I knew I'd get you with that one. Um, anyways, I don't know. Here's a war TV show this or live action feature film sure animated show sure why now because it's probably all you could afford netflix uh but this shit's hot this shit's hot between cyberpunk witcher etc true, true, true. you know all this stuff is an easy way not to just get money off an existing ip but to also bump your existing video games um so I think this is totally doable. I think the live action Gears of War should be like some literally ridiculous over the top bromance. Like I want them to be almost like Warhammer 40K where they just have ridiculous sized armor and it needs to be super, super, super stupid gory. There's totally a way to do this properly. I'm not sure I trust them to do that. They will no. almost always take the, the middle of the road mediocre solid six approach. I'm afraid Gears of War armor will look like most live action Master Chief armor where it just looks a little too off. Uh, to be fair, the Halo show did a pretty good job. Yeah, but the, I was about to say the Halo stuff before that always looked like fan films. I think it's going to be like Dune. Like I don't think the Dune costumes were good because they were just wearing fucking like black sneakers. You know. So my concern is I think the Gears of War is just going to be like generic black bulky quote unquote armor. It's just going to look like fucking Kevlar stuff, and that's not. I don't think they have the balls to go over the top with this, which is what this yeah. needs. I hope the animated show does that though. Cause I think you yes. could, the, the gears of war world is very cool. Yeah. Um, the, like we've been here the whole time sort of thing is Kyle, is you're, neat... you're, you're a film buff. How do they make this good? Um, well, they have to use mad world at some point. Um, <laughs> oh, it's no, a different, it's a to. different, it's a different cover every episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Actually, um, shit. 
that's really um, good the intro theme is a different like the like the the opening credits is what's it called in a tv show when they have the what is that called theme title song? sequence title sequence yeah, i guess stinger? title sequence like a stinger i feel like there's i don't know there's some there's some meaningless phrase like i'm trying to find but yeah if if actually that'd be really cool if every single episode it was a different cover of mad world kind of like how the wire did a different cover of the same song each season there you go take that idea i, feel like I could i feel like i could dig that i'm also a big fan of title sequences that change subtly like um yes they yes. did this in the in the social network the main theme of the social network decays and becomes more um uh, like it, uh, audio, 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 grand erotic, grand erotic? Asphyxia. <laughs> yeah, auto, auto, erotic. it becomes way more erotic. I have a hard time getting through that movie, so <laughs> yes, I get, get about your, five um, minutes. In. Get your closet <laughs> doors ready. Um, uh, yeah, Speaking so I, I love, I love themes that change and and morph along with <laughs> yes. the story and stuff like that. I, I think. I think that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, as far as like doing it right, I mean, Dave Batista, I think, said he was interested. So maybe do that, especially because he has the build for it. But also, like, don't yeah. get writers that actively hate the source material. <laughs> um, that seems to be a problem, especially with The Witcher. Uh, one of the reasons being why Henry Cavill just left the lead role for Liam Hemsworth, which I think is a major downgrade. Um, Jesus. And also the second, <laughs> the second Hemsworth series, the second season of The Witcher is awful. Um, it's so bad. I hated it. It's really bad. I was like, okay, first season is a little rough, but I can work with it. So as long as they do f for the, I mean, if it's, if we're talking about the movie, like, I don't know, just make something that, is a reflection of what the game is and don't do anything different than that. Don't throw things that weren't in the game on top of it and say, this is what the game should have been about. Oh, you, you want it to be, you want it to be Gears of War. What was the story of Gears of War 1? Um, uh, I, it was trying to get his father's... Corpse? <sighs> to fuck it? Necrophilia? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I beat that game on the hardest difficulty, and I can't remember. That's, the that's story. why. That's why. That's why I'm like, I think they. I, I think they should try and stick close to the source material, but the source material being anything in God of, in Gears of War, not necessarily. Get one. get Alex Garland to write the script. Honestly, like uh, just, you know, just turn I, the first game into a script. And I read. It. I read his Halo script. I'm not sure I want him to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I meant like that sort of like a like translate yeah, yeah. it into into a screen version and use that. Yes. Yeah. Um speaking of I I Oh, I didn't know Eric Nyland wrote Gears of War. That makes a lot of fucking sense. Who's that? He wrote the um Halo novels. The game for Oh, out. cool. Like the Fall of Reach good. and stuff? I yeah, love Fall of Reach. Yeah. Um At least I think he did. Oh yeah, he wrote Fall of Reach, First Strike, Ghost of Onyx, and Evolution. Three of those books I've read, and they're very good. Anyways, I, like I, 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 I am cautiously optimistic about this because Netflix actually has been making some good adaptations lately. You know, I think The Witcher overall was good. Cyberpunk Edge Runners was really, really good. Castlevania was incredible. So like, so good. there's, there's, there's enough material here for them to make something good, and it's with a company that has made some stinkers, but has also made some absolute hits in the same space. So there's yeah. potential here, but I, I need to see some more stuff before I get like, truly excited about it. Man, I should, um, I feel like I should do a Gears playthrough. This game's, this game's good. First I've game. only, I've only played the first one. I've never played any of the other ones. Really? Oh, two, two, I just remember the day two came out, my friends and I spent probably eight to 12 hours playing the Horde mode. Awesome. Uh, you could like shield block the enemies and if you you had to drop the shields and pick them up between rounds so they didn't like despawn and then you could just block the door so the enemies didn't come through it was wild that's awesome um, what are you looking at Ian? what are you so confused about sorry i'm just i'm seeing the tweet you put for this and it makes it sound like you are streaming that's what God i thought too i was gonna right say now. something but then I, I looked on your games list and i was like oh i guess that works Sorry, uh, it was just confusing. I, I wrote it really fast while not paying attention. You said you said Will is playing God of War Ragnarok. Come see what he thinks in the, the Twitch link. Oh, so, sorry. I, I did not finish. I think I was supposed to say, come see what he thinks about it or what he talks about it. Yeah. You should you I should have just said, 
Yeah, it, it's fine. It, I, yeah. I got it. I understood. Yeah, I Will mean, nobody showed up Ragnarok. anyways, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Will, uh, Will is me, playing. We have five people watching. Actually, you know what? That's probably why we had six fucking viewers. <laughs> well, I learned if you lie to people, they show up. <laughs> Will, you should have said, Will is playing God of War Ragnarok. See him come. And Tony Hawk Switch. is coming. No, <laughs> I literally almost wrote C-U-M to be funny. And then I was like, oh, I can't do that. It's not our brand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, I, I didn't mean to segue brand. there. You no, it's me, fine. Uh, You're right to call out my shitty tweets. Um, can I let me answer the story, next story? Next story. Yeah, yeah I got a, no. I got a good question for it. Lionsgate, according to IndieWire, Lionsgate, the film studio, is flirting with a major AAA John Wick video game. Gentlemen, let's start with Kyle. What do you think the John Wick video game should be? Uh, a mix between Hitman and what's like a f Mirror's Edge. Maybe Ooh, like add some like yeah add some yeah like fat yeah like in it. yeah yeah something something really movement based super um, hot yeah oh that would be cool I like that that's actually a really good idea they should just do super hot John Wick yeah because I was gonna say I think a lot about as as somebody who like used to be a real gun nerd like a little bit of a gun nut not in a conservative way but in a like guns are actually like <laughs> like guns cool. are pretty cool yeah guns are cool. <laughs> Like a lot of what make John makes John Wick awesome is like the really fucking good gun handling in it. Um, and I feel like if you're playing a first person shooter with a controller or with a mouse and keyboard, it doesn't come across that well because you see it in like reload animations and that's fucking it. I think it I think it should be a VR game. I, I think they should do some VR magic to really have you not just the agility part, but also like the fucking like the gun kind of shit, you know? Someone did a, a in Boneworks. They did like a John Wick thing. Yeah. And they just like, keep grabbing yeah. guys and double tapping them. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's why I think I think John Wick isn't just about shooting. It's not just about the story. Both of those are good but it's about the ways in which he interacts with the gun and the action and the environment. It's, it's super movement based. Like it's, yeah. it, it, it has to feel fluid, but also yeah. like chaotic at the same time. So it either needs to be like, like a, a melee shooter combo where it's almost like a first person, like Arkham Knight type thing or Arkham Asylum where you're mm. like constantly comboing around a circle and then occasionally shooting people, or it needs to be VR. Yeah, VR super hot. Yeah, I just want to be in VR and catch a knife that someone's thrown at me and throw it back. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What do you think? What do you think the crossover on gun nuts and people who nut on guns is? <laughs> Probably about ten percent. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like fifteen. Yeah, ten. <sighs> the thing about the thing about like I used to be in some gun communities. Again, not conservative minded, but just people who are always like. Yo, let's talk about uh, guns. Clip that. <laughs> let's talk about like people being like, did you know the 1895 Nagant revolver is one of the few Nagants you can put a silencer on because it doesn't jump the gap. It seals the barrel between the cylinder. And it's just like, that's fucking neato. And the problem with those is that when you get an insular community around a single focus that and a single topic that is not typically mainstream, they end up just kind of like circle jerking around all sorts of weird topics on the periphery. Yeah. So it's that's like the tank saying, people. This all happened on yeah. January 6th, right? This conversation. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was the night of the 5th. The, the night of the 5th. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. um, the yeah, Can so... we make a movie called The Night of the 5th? <laughs> <laughs> the... <laughs> I, oh my God. I know what I was thinking about today was that incredible joke we had, which is that the only reason Garfield wasn't at January 6th <laughs> is because it was a Monday. <laughs> it wasn't a Monday. <laughs> I know. That's what makes it even better. But he just thought it was. He thought it was. Fuck. Anyways. He would have oh, shit on Nancy Pelosi's chair, I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Juicy lasagna. <laughs> oh my god. Juicy lasagna? Is that what you said? Did you see the lasagna he left? Is that what you're gonna say? Oh get it out, Ian! It shit was juicy. Juicy Zanya turn. <laughs> juicy what? Zanya turn? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, oh, red and white. Oh. Red and white. Is he okay? Yeah, 
for the Boston <laughs> so <laughs> He eats so much. He eats so much, he just shits it out. Perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. Huh? God. God damn it. I'm crying now. Uh, I'm canceling my flight. I'm definitely putting <laughs> Juicy Lasagna Turd in the next year's intro no. video. Lasagna. You gotta Can't be wait cool. for my flight to get canceled, and then I have to drive with Kyle. It's gonna be like is a that cool your, road trip movie. Is that your backup, or is it just uh, fly down Friday? Because I would, I would talk to the airline. They may just put you on the next day. Yeah, I, I, I'm still waiting. Like, I don't even know when is the right time to think. Like just Thursday, keep keep an eye on your status. Yeah. What just what um eye. what flight airline are you thinking? I think United. Yeah, yeah. I I would call them like tomorrow. I think it'll be, be okay. Like, What's going on? <clears throat> So the just storms. to add some context, um, we're doing extra life this weekend. Everybody's flying down to my house, but there's also a, a hurricane slash tropical storm <laughs> hitting Jacksonville Thursday night when Will is supposed to get here. So Yeah, it's supposed to be <clears throat> at Thursday at 1 p.m. It's supposed to be south of you. And then Friday 1 a.m. It's supposed to be north of you. It's like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> You're going uh, through. I, but, honestly, but also, I think it'll be fine. I think they're just going to fly yeah. around it and it's just going to be a little bit longer flight. Yeah, I think it's it's a 50 50 chance if they're going to if the FAA slash airport is going to is going to shut down for now. But uh, it, it feels like that the chance of them shutting down is getting lower every day. Yeah. And it's already been downgraded like twice. So, yeah, I think it'll be fine. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to bring that whole thing up. Uh, moving on to the next uh, story here. There is a report out that there might be a horizon of Horizon Zero Dawn fame MMO in the works. Um, Girl Games and Sony's popular okay. open world sci-fi franchise uh, already has the one spin-off for the VR adventure, but this new report claims that Sony is working with NC Soft on an MMO set within the universe oh. as a last year's horizon. You know what? I, sorry, I was just about to say this is probably really going to be some top. fucking some like it's not a true MMO. It's probably going to just be like a fucking Destiny, like where you're instanced with twenty random people and then you just go do, you know smaller group based missions in a world where you see a dozen other people but ncsoft does fucking mmos so this could be a true mmo in which case i'm like you know what honestly one of my problems with horizon was that it felt like you had too much of the hero complex in a world that was kind of interesting but wasn't quite capturing my attention but if you just put a whole bunch of mmo trappings around that and give me like an endless amount of stuff to do and show off to other people like a typical mmo style i might be into that honestly yeah be cool I feel like when was the last new? Oh, I guess uh, New World. Black Desert. Was a couple of years ago. Oh, New World. Yeah. And did, Crowfall was the other one. Did yeah. Forbidden West sell well? Probably. Probably is my answer as well. That's my answer. Yeah. It must have. Um, it's funny. Sorry, you brought up Destiny, and I need to tie this back. Air, uh, Halucha, clip this in post for me. Um, no. God of War Two has the thing where if you forget something, you forgot to pick up something in the world, uh, back at your house near the upgrade station is a box that has everything you forgot in it. And Destiny is the first game I can think of that did that, and I was very happy that someone continued that. Okay. Halucha, um, delete that clip. Thank you. Yeah, Halucha, if you can delete that clip and then swallow it. And think of me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Halucha, next story, please. Next story. Yeah, Halucha, can you talk about the next story, please? Uh, I mean, honestly, we could skip all of these. Uh, yeah, let me do the hot take here. New rumors suggest PS5 Slim is releasing 2023 from Insider Gaming. The EU is in an in-depth investigation into Microsoft's Activision Blizzard acquisition, saying, no way, Jose. That's what they say in Europe, because they're so close to, to Spain. Mexico. To Mexico. Spain? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, just I forget about Spain all the time. <laughs> um, Xbox reportedly Jose, passed on... I Sorry, is no, Jose it's a popular name in Spain. No, it's definitely Mexico. It was part of the joke. Uh, that's kind of interesting, though. Um, yeah, because they're like two fucking different countries. Uh, no, uh, San Jose is a village in Spain, so, so that's why say, that's why I'm like, yes. I could go either way. It's a yeah. village, it it's not a name. Question. I would assume, well, okay, you don't, you don't Dude, name your I son don't. New York City. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Name oh, Northwest. Sorry. Northwest. Northwest Yay. Chicago. 
Uh, were you going to say something, Ian? Or are you just being a bitch? I'm trying to think about a Jersey joke, but they kind of write themselves. I'll call them shit after New Jersey. <laughs> I'm not the one getting the hurricane. Yeah, I'm not the one in Florida. You know what I was thinking about today? Jerking it's off hurricanes. old people. Hurricanes, they're just not as exciting as blizzards. Well, it's not as much fun. It's a different kind of blizzard. excitement. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's not as much different, fun. It is like a different, it's just a warm <laughs> blizzard. From I think the problem is when a hurricane's happening, honestly, they're kind of boring because you go like, sure is windy out there. <laughs> Maybe also, hurricanes, will fly. hurricanes you can't hold upside down because they'll fall out of the cup. Whereas like blizzards, it's snowing and it's just oh my God. beautiful and blissful. That was a know? fantastic Wendy's joke. Come on, Wendy's. Wendy's nuts. Wendy's. Fuck I mean Dairy off. Queen. Fuck Excuse no! me. Excuse me. Wow. Oh, Talk about did that. I can't ruining I was, your entire life. I was thinking about one queen and I said the other. Oh, okay, maybe I'll, I'll give you a little bit back for that one. Thank you. Uh, you Xbox reportedly passed on Genshin Impact, uh, and then Bioware tweets a Mass Effect teaser image. Uh, it was of like, a like Mass the third Effect time. <laughs> yeah, no one's coming back to your game, guys. I don't know. I, I'm I kind will. of excited. We forgot about Anthem and Andromeda. <laughs> I should. I should probably finish the third one before I play the new one. Yeah, I should probably play the third one. Uh, Oh. Folks, thank you. Thank you so much for being here this week. I was your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week was the lovely Ian Gibson and the thankful Kyle Bailey. Thankful that we sustain him in his career you with do. our vats of milk that we produce. I don't know. <laughs> I thought we agreed not to talk about that. You're a Morton sweet, Joe, and <laughs> you're sweet Zanya turds. What are those mommy milkers called in that? In that? Mother's milk. That's what it is. Um, folks, if you want to see our hot, hot content, you can go to subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring you to our link tree where you can see all of our fantastic stuff, including our new merch that is available uh, this weekend, folks. No stream on Thursday because this weekend... Saturday at noon to Sunday at noon, we are doing our 24 hours of extra life. Catch us on giantbomb.com as well as Twitch. Wow! Uh, yeah, crazy. That's big crazy. fucking news, folks. Strings. That's crazy. I, I gave Matt Rory so much money uh, to host us. Uh, I'm bankrupt now. So much uh, sloppy zanya. You gave him <laughs> something else, too. Yeah, you gave him a sloppy zanya. Yeah, I gave him a sloppy zanya <laughs> on January 6th for this. Uh, no, folks, night of so the tune fifth. in for that. Night please. of the fifth. <laughs> no, allegedly. Uh, night of the fifth. Uh, <laughs> um, God. <laughs> we should write a fanfic called Night of the Fifth. That should be oh, one of the. Uh, that'll Garfield. be one of the, the goals. Fuck. It's, Wait, can the save data fanfic take place on the Night of the I Fifth? I was about to say it's thirteen men, but it's but it's save data plus subpixel Night of the Fifth. Uh, we'll see y'all this weekend, folks.